it was almost as if she was going through some sort of withdrawal. Explain yeah. what was happening. Like a heroin moment. addict. Right. You know, sitting there shaking, you know, like I can't do this anymore. A lot of people make a lot about, you know, how you really get on your players mm -hmm. in practice. And you speak about this or write about it extensively in your book. I wanted to run through a couple examples sure. and that I think appropriately show how you'll kind of bust the players' yeah. chops and uh, get your thoughts on the instance. The first being uh, Sue Bird. She is at this time embarrassed, I think, and crying, crying in front of the team. Mm -hmm. And you leave the gym that day and you write, you're ecstatic because she was crying. Ex explain what happened and why you felt that way. Well, you gotta understand, you gotta understand, some people like to put on this facade, like, I got everything under control, don't worry about it. Nothing bothers me. I'm immune to everything. And that's true. I'm smarter than everybody else. I got everything under control. Okay? I know more about what you're supposed to do than you do. Okay? I'm never wrong, and I'm always one step ahead of you, which is all true. It's all true. Okay. However, nobody's a robot. So you hide those emotions all the time, those fears and like that. So late in her senior year, at the appropriate time, it all came out. And she got mad about an, an assignment that she missed. Kid scored, and she didn't have her hand up. And I questioned her on it, and I got on her about it. And naturally, she's never wrong. So she came back at me with it, and I let her have it, and she broke down. And I'm like, good, she finally realized she's not perfect. Now we can move on from there. And then obviously she was the best player in the NCAA tournament, we won a national championship. How about the time you threw Diana Taurasi out of practice and said you were embarrassed by her play? Yeah, because she stinks. She's a freshman, and she's the most talented player on the team. She knows it. The rest of the kids on the team know it. Everybody knows it. And there's a couple drills that we're doing, and she just says, screw it. I'm not doing this anymore. And the other kids are looking at her like, what are you doing? So, okay, I quit. I quit. No, I didn't say it out of my mouth. She didn't say, coach, I quit. No, I'm just going to stand here and go ahead. Do whatever you want. I, I'm not participating. You want me to guard that guy? No. I'll pretend like I am, but I'm not guarding. So we just said, finally, get out. And she left. But that was the only time it ever happened. And better yet, in the, I think it was individual player meeting uh, after the freshman year, she might have been looking for some positive feedback. And you say to her when you're sitting down with her, next year we're going to suck with you on the team. We can't win with you next year. I think that something yeah. like that mm -hmm. is a line. Yeah. You know, Anna Tarazzi is the best player ever to play at Connecticut. She might be the best player ever to play college basketball, pro basketball on the women's side. And that's what you told her you thought she could be even before she ever came to UConn yeah. as well. Yeah, I said, you have a chance to be the best player ever to play. But you've got some issues you're going to have to address. So her freshman year, you know what she did? Whatever she felt like doing. You want to dribble by me? Go ahead. And after you dribble by me, I'm going to smack you in the back of the head and get my fourth foul with 10 minutes left in the game. Why? Because I don't care. I don't care. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, the way I want to do it. So after we lose in the national championship game, I felt bad for her at the time because she played so poorly. And she's the reason we got there in the semifinals. When we got back home, I made a point to tell her. We're not going to win any games next year with you as our leader. Impossible. Because you're immature. You don't care enough about the little things. You're undisciplined. And you know what? If you're going to be our leader, we're going to suck. Plain and simple. And she set out to prove me wrong, which was the whole point of the conversation. <laughs> How about uh, senior year? You're, I think, in the locker room. And you and the team hear somebody crying in the shower, and it turns out it was Diana, and you talk in your book about how it was almost as if she was going through some sort of withdrawal. Explain yeah. what was happening. Like a heroin moment. addict. Right. You know, sitting there shaking, you know, like I can't do this anymore. What was going on? She had spent the entire junior year carrying a bunch of guys that had no business winning a championship, and against all odds, we won a national championship. Now, senior year, she has to do it again, and it just caught up to her. I mean, she had to be the best point guard, the best shooter, the best rebounder, the best passer, and had to guard the other team's best player. 
every night. And it just kind of overwhelmed her after a certain point because we lost and there was nothing she could do about it. And it just came to a head and it just all came crashing out. And I, you know, again, I felt sorry for her and I made her see that, hey, it's okay. And this, the, this will be all right. And a couple days later, I think you call a team meeting. Diane is there, the rest of the team's there. What do you say to the team and what's her reaction while you're saying it? Well, the one thing I want to get to, across to the team is this is how personally she takes it. She feels responsible for everything that happens to every one of you guys. If you held that same view, if you felt half as responsible for what happens in our team as she does, and she's the best player, then you know what? We don't have anything to worry about the rest of the season. But I just want you to know, she's having a breakdown carrying you guys. So either you can make her load a little bit lighter, or you say, I don't care, D. We're going to let you kill yourself. And naturally, you know, when you challenge players, you know what they do? They either prove you right and go, you're right, coach, we suck. Or they step up and go, oh, no way, man. I'm better than that. Let's go. And then they do. It's those players that when you challenge them and you go, hey, you know what? You need to do a lot better job than that. And they go, uh, actually, I can't, coach. This is as good as I am. I stink. And you're done. She wrote about you, and um, you've obviously read this before, but I'm interested to get your reaction about this. This is Diana Taurasi. She says, I know I can go to Coach Ariema for anything. I have enough confidence in him that I've told him things I haven't ever told people I've known my whole life. Coach really worked on getting to know me. He figured me out like no one else ever has. So that's why I trust him with anything. That's typical, Diana, though. There's, there's a part of her that values relationships and loyalty and trust, you know? From the time I met Diana when she was in high school, from the time we started recruiting her, uh, there was a connection there. Her background and my background are so similar, the way she grew up, you know, her parents, my parents. So we understood each other right from the beginning. And she knew from the time she walked in here that I had, that I, I had her back, that there was never anything that was going to happen to her, that I wouldn't be there to help her. And once you tell somebody, I think you're going to be the best player in the history of college basketball, um, and she believes you, then there's something going on between the two of you that you can't explain. You can't explain. And even to this day, if I don't talk to her for three months, it doesn't matter. You know, I know that when that phone rings and when I, when I get that text, I know it's really important and I know that we're right back to where we were.